There are literally no downsides to using strict form uh, when you were training. Hey everybody, I thought I would chat with you guys and gals a little bit about this today. And you know, when I make this statement, um, I'm making the point here that ego lifting and using various uh, cheat reps and body English and stuff, there really isn't a benefit to doing it. Uh, and I could make a case for there being only benefits to doing strict, strict training. But uh, I want to be clear when I make that statement because you will you can say that and people say, but this pro bodybuilder over here used terrible form. Arnold Schwarzenegger used lots of cheat reps and bad form. And Branch Warren has some of the cheatiest form I've ever seen in my life. And they've been extremely accomplished bodybuilders. Right. And that's why when I make the statement, I am not saying that you can't get crazy jacked using cheat reps. I'm not saying that you can't get just as big on with bad form, cheating, things like that. I'm not saying that because clearly you can, okay? Clearly you can, right? Because as long as we're getting muscles into the positions to where they are getting the tension that we want on the muscle fibers that we want, progressive overload is present, fatigue is present, uh, you know, form itself isn't always as big of a deal as people think that it is. It really isn't uh, because muscles don't care. Just like we always point out that you can get jacked on compound movements, you can get jacked on isolation movements. Muscles don't really care about that. Muscle fibers only really care about if they're stimulated or not, right? That, that is all the muscle fiber cares about. Either you stimulated and fatigued that particular muscle fiber with mechanical tension or you didn't. Okay, that is what's gonna determine whether it gets a growth stimulus. So when, again, I make those statements, I am not saying a person can't become Mr. Olympia using cheat reps. I'm not saying you can't get extremely jacked. No one is saying that. What we are saying is there is no downside to using strict form. Like, see the way that I'm curling here in this particular video, right? I'm just curling very, very strict very controlled using a full range of motion and not even saying full range of motion is required particularly top we could we could make an argument that plenty of exercises uh you can get maximum growth while skipping the top completely right there's a lot of movements that are particularly for just chasing certain muscles yeah absolutely but getting muscles into their lengthened position seems to be really important so certain times the top can be can be uh removed from a lot of exercises just fine as long as you get the bottom and it's the same with with form overall as long as you are hitting the angles that we need to stimulate the muscle you can get away with cheating and it's not going to shortchange your growth however for the majority of lifters if you're stricter you're probably more likely to hit those angles Okay? Because if you're, if you're doing an exercise to an appreciable range of motion and you're using strict form, you know you're hitting those angles. If you're cheating, some people have a really good mind-muscle connection and they can get away with it. Okay? All right? And I think you can make the case for that with some of the bodybuilders out there doing that. These are individuals who maybe have a very high kinesthetic awareness. Right? They have a very, very high body awareness that you oftentimes see that with a lot of athletes, like high level athletes, professionals. Um, they have like a high kinesthetic intelligence. Um, probably a degree of that in, in professional bodybuilding circles also. So for those people, they do know how to sometimes get away with that. They can use a form that isn't ideal and still hit those positions and get just as much muscle growth because they, they are in that position. Uh, in that area and they can feel it and they have a good sense of body awareness and, and feel okay but they would get just as much stimulus if they were strict for people who don't have that kinesthetic awareness they may not be hitting those positions because we see a lot of that in the gym don't we particularly on a lot of chest pressing and other stuff and guys wonder why they don't they don't build a big chest like this exercise doesn't build my chest my really build chest of many champions for generations you think that you're special maybe you just aren't performing the exercise correctly right and you'll see it on bench pressing even dumbbell presses right they'll half wrap but they skip the bottom you know in the pursuit of lifting more weight ego lifting 
Now, if you've got good awareness, it may not matter. You may be able to get the muscles into those positions. But, what is a potential downside there? Uh, you're being forced to lift a heavier weight. Now, people say, but then you say more weight matters, tension matters. Yeah, tension matters on the muscle fiber level. And heavier weights can help accommodate that. But if it's just heavier weight at the expense of tension because you're just swinging it more, no, it gives you no advantage. There's probably none. Maybe some sort of eccentric overloading with a weight that's heavier than you can lift. But, again, that requires a certain amount of body awareness to pull that off. So when you see the lifters with that looser form, and they do, but then they control the eccentric just a little bit, okay, that's a different beast, isn't it? I can promise you most noobs don't have the body awareness to pull that off correctly. Not like a lot of advanced lifters do. Uh, so you have that, but then so the heavier weight, it beats you up more. It is harder on recovery. If set per set because you're cheating more and using a heavier weight, it may be shortchanging you on the recovery side because you might be getting the same amount of stimulus, but then it's harder to recover from beating you up more. Same thing on the injury end, right? That overuse from it, it can accumulate injuries faster. Am I saying that using loose form or bad form automatically means a higher injury risk? No, of course not. Can it potentially set you up for easier overuse? Yes. And overuse is what causes injuries. That is the number one cause of injuries in the gym. And that can be a combination of, of bad form, excessive weight, excessive workload, okay? not recovering correctly, having certain areas that get overuse in that area and they're not recovered. Right? There's a lot of factors that go into overuse, but we do know that overuse is what causes 90% of weight room injuries. It's not just because you lifted at a heavy weight one time and things went wrong. And that, that can certainly happen. That tends to happen a lot more I've noticed in certain the more equipped you are, knee wraps, things like that. But yeah, so in, in this case, the looser form can absolutely contribute to more injuries. It can absolutely contribute uh, to a little bit more difficulty on recovery. Now, am I saying that, oh, you're automatically gonna have these problems? No, of course not. There's a lot of factors involved. And again, maybe if your recovery's on point, your lifestyle's on point, eh, you might be able to get away with taking other special supplements that help facilitate better recovery. Hey, you might be able to get away with it just fine. But if we're going to talk about really getting the most out of your training and having a mature approach to it, using a little bit stricter form, probably a pretty good idea. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys next time.